वेलकम टू फिजिक्स हब वेल दिस सेट सेट थर्टी सिक्स इज बैक डेटेड अपलोड इट शुड हैव बिन अपलोडेड ऑन नाइन्थ ऑफ जून ट्वेंटी एनी वे दिस सेट वीडियो इज वेरी स्पेशल हेयर विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द टेन मोस्ट कॉमन टाइप्स ऑफ क्वेश्चन आस्ट इन सी एस आर नेट एग्जाम आई नो टूमोरो इज योर नेट एग्जाम सो इन दिस वीडियो आई विल नॉट बी डिस्कसिंग एनी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड or learn the questions the purpose of this said video is to revise the 10 types of frequently asked questions so that you can answer in the same way if you are given some complicated questions of the same type now without any further delay let's start today's said video so the first question reads like this the graph of the function f of x equal to this where n equals to 0 1 2 dot 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 is shown below its laplace transformation is okay so in between 0 to 1 it's uh, had got, it has got value 1 and in 1 to 2 it has got value 0 and in the same way it is repeated now this is the function given to you so the laplace transformation uh, of this function we are using the uh, conventional formula for laplace transformation 0 to infinity e to the power minus sx fx dx and now we have um, what we have we have decomposed the integration uh, into different limits from 0 to 1 and then 1 to 2 then 2 to 3 dot 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 and the, uh, and in this way we are uh, when we are evaluating the integration we see that uh, we are getting a series okay so it's basically uh, this series 1 plus x to the power uh, minus 1 okay so there is alternate uh, sign minus plus minus so 1 plus uh, x to the power minus 1 here x is e to the power minus s so you are getting 1 by s into 1 uh, plus e to the power minus s so it is matching with option c option c is the correct or answer so for mathematical method section this is a very common type of question so one question you get uh, from laplace transformation in general so the second question the poisson bracket of this has the value okay so mod r uh, uh, r is given by this and p is given by this so mod of r is given by this and mod of p is given by this okay so the poisson bracket of this mod r and p is uh, given by this so you know that uh, there is a summation over uh, x y z okay so we are will be getting three terms one related to x another related to y and the last one related to z and uh, it is uh, summation of those three terms so look basically the three terms are uh, same type so we'll be uh, calculating the first term and we'll put the same value for the other two directly okay so we are con uh, we are calculating for x component so del r by del x into del p by del p x minus del r by del p x into del p by del x so on uh, upon evaluating this differentiation we get you get this one x p x by uh, mod r into mod p because uh, this term when it is coming to the denominator it is giving you uh, 1 by mod r and the same 1 by mod p similarly for y and z components will be getting y p i by this and z p z by z this so the poisson bracket of this thing is uh, written in this way sum of these three things so it is basically uh, x p x plus y p i plus z p z means r dot p and mod r into mod p so it is basically uh, vector r by mod r means r cap and vector p by mod p equals to uh, p cap so it is uh, r cap dot p cap and it is matching with option b so option b is the correct option moving to question number 3 the electric field of an electromagnetic wave is given by this the associated magnetic field b is given by okay so what information we can extract from the info, from the given e uh, so the main formula is e equals to e not cos k k dot r uh, minus omega t so k dot r means uh, k equals to pi into 0.3 i cap plus 0.4 j cap and omega is 100 1000 into pi and uh, b equals to k cap cross e by c now omega goes to c k so c goes to omega by k so it is equals to uh, vector k into e by omega now we have to just taken the cos product uh, in this way okay so this is separated uh, just to show you the calculation how we can uh, calculate the cross product so once you evaluate the cross product of this thing and divide it by omega you get b, b. And b equals to the minus four e not cos uh, this four four i minus three j. Oh my God, here a plane. So it is matching with option b. Option b is the correct option. Moving to the next question, the wave function of a particular time t equals to zero is given by this. 
where u1 and u2 are the normalized eigen states with eigen energy eigen values u1 and u2 respectively where e2 is greater than u1 the shortest time after which psi t will become orthogonal to psi 0 is okay so psi 0 is given so when uh, psi 0 is given we can easily write psi t mm, and this time dependent part is added here multiplied here it is over minus i e1 t by h cut and this is 2 is there so e to the power minus i e2 t by h cut now psi t is orthogonal to psi 0 means uh, this scalar product will be 0 and once you evaluate that you find this is equal to this ok so something is omitted here so you can read it from here e to the power minus i uh, e1 t by h cut uh, minus equals to minus e to the power minus i e2 by h cut ok half, half of get cancelled from both the sides so it's basically e to the power i e2 minus e1 t by h cut it is equal to minus 1 and minus 1 can be written as e to the power i pi and uh, equating the both sides we get uh, t equals to pi h cut by e2 minus u1 and it is matching with option b so option b is the correct option moving to question number 5 a particle is scattered by a central potential this where v0 and mu are the positive constants if the momentum transfer q is such that q uh, equals to mod q much much greater than mu the scattering cross section in the Born approximation as q tends to infinity depends on q as you can use this formula ok the form factor is given uh, for high energy as <coughs> q tends to infinity ok so the form factor is basically for high energy now the scattering amplitude f of theta phi goes to minus 2 m by h cut square q 0 to infinity r vr sin q r dr this is the formula now uh, vr is given to be v naught r e to the minus mu r so one extra r is there so it is becoming r square and v naught e to the minus mu r now what you are doing uh, here you are getting e to the minus mu r so you have to write sin q r in terms of the exponential so writing them in terms of exponential and separating them we are getting two integrations now when you uh, evaluate these two integration you are getting this ok so firstly a minus sign uh, will uh, come in the integration and you will be getting this ok so the first time uh, first term this is the first term integration for, for the first term and the for the second term this is the integration so uh, minus sign was there and minus sign will come from the integration so it is um, basically becoming plus now uh, a plus b whole cube formula is apply being applied here and we expand it and we found this ok now we have to find out the dependence of the uh, scattering cross section so scattering cross section is the uh, square of this f of theta phi ok so firstly we are uh, finding the dependency of q on uh, the uh, dependency of f of theta phi uh, in q and once we get that uh, we can square that and we will get the dependence of the scattering cross section on q and we are getting it uh, q to the power minus 8 and it is matching with option a so option a is the correct option moving to the next question question number six a gas of n non-interacting particles is in thermal equilibrium at temperature t each particle can be in any of the possible non degenerate states of energy 0 to e and 4 e the average energy per particle of this gas of the gas when beta uh, epsilon much much less than one is so these are the three states given to you these are non degenerate so therefore the partition function can be written like this it is over minus beta into e here e is 0 here e is 2 e and here e is 4 e so this is a partition function we are getting therefore the average energy e into the power minus beta e ok so here is the energy e 0 e to the minus beta into 0 here is the energy 2 e 2 e to the minus beta into 2 e 4 e e to the power minus beta into 4 e ok no, uh, now uh, what is triggering us to expand this exponential this term beta e is less than much much less than 1 so when you s you are seeing this type of thing uh, you have to consider that we have to uh, expand the exponential so once we expand the exponential we are getting in the, uh, these terms and dot 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 higher order terms now beta is itself much much less than 1 so we can neglect the higher order terms in fact we can neglect this beta e term also because it is much much less than 1 so one is uh, highly dominating here and <coughs> so this is basically 6 e by 3 means 2 e and is matching with option a option a is the correct option <coughs> sorry 
Moving to question number seven, in a measurement of the viscous drag force experienced by uh, spherical particles in a liquid, the force is found to be proportional to V to the one by three, where V is the measured value volume of each particle. If V is measured to be thirty millimeter cube with an uncertainty of two point seven millimeter cube, the resulting relative percentage of uh, percentage uncertainty in the measured force is. Okay, so the rel relative percentage uncertainty in the measured force is found from this uh, formula. Sigma f square equals to del f by del v whole square sigma v square. Sigma v is the uncertainty in the measurement of volume. So f is proportional to the volume. So f equals to k into v to one by three. So for uh, the simplicity in the calculation, we are taking k equals to one. Okay, because k is an uh, arbitrary constant. So if you are not given anything, you can take it as one. So mm, sigma f equals to del f by del v. So differentiating this expression of f with respect to v, and uh, we are getting this. Now the value of uh, v and uh, delta v is given. So we just replace the values, and we are getting 0.09, and it is matching with option b. So option b is the correct option. Question number eight: If the hyperfine interaction in an atom is given by h equal to a into a c dot s p, where s c and s p are denote the electron and proton spins respectively, the splitting between the three s one and one s zero state is okay. So total spin is uh, a c equals to a c plus s p. Therefore, a c square equal to a c square plus s p square plus two into a c dot s p. Therefore, s c dot s p equals to half of a c square minus a c square plus minus s p square. This s is capital s. Okay. And the Hamiltonian is given by this. So we have just determined this term AC dot SP. So H equals to A by two into this term. Now AC square into SP square equal to S into S plus one H cut square. These S are small S, okay. And this is the capital S, the operator. So value of S is half. So half into half plus one means three by four H cut H cut square. Therefore the expression of H becomes this now we have to determine the energy for these two states then only we can find out the splitting between those two states so for 3s1 uh, the multiplicity is 3 here so 2s plus 1 equals to 3 okay 2s plus 1 this is the multiplicity oh my god i cannot write here okay 2s plus 1 whatever it is 2s plus 1 So 2s plus 1 equals 3 means s equal to 1 means s square is capital S. Okay, so this is small s. So small s is 1. 1 into 1 plus 1. 2s is square h cut square. Here 1 is 0 means multiplicity. 2s plus 1 equals to 1 means s equal to 0. Therefore s square equal to 0 h cut square. Therefore h1 for 3s 1 equals to a by 4 h cut square. And h2 for 1 is 0 is becoming minus 3 by 4 a h cut square. Therefore the splitting between 3s 1 and 1 is 0 state is delta h equal to h1 minus h2. So it's basically a into h cut square, and it is matching with option B. So option B is the correct option. Moving to question number nine, the dispersion relation of photon phonons in a solid is given by this expression. The velocity of phonons at large wavelength is. So in this question, uh, we are given uh, some limit. Large wavelength. So for large wavelength, this uh, k x a k y a k z a are small because k goes to twice pi by lambda. So when k tends to zero, lambda tends to infinity. And conversely, when lambda tends to infinity, k tends to zero. So these terms are basically very small. So when we we know that uh, if the terms are small, then cos x. If x is very small, then cos x can be expanded. So we have expanded that. And we have neglected the higher order terms. Okay. So omega square of k equals to omega naught square a square by two into and minus one minus one minus one so minus three and it is cancelling with this plus three and this k x square plus k y square plus k z square terms remaining. So it can be written as k square now omega equals to omega naught a by root two k. Therefore the uh, velocity means root velocity here. So v is equal to d omega by d k. So it's basically omega naught a by root two, and it is matching with option d. Option d is the correct option. Finally, the last question: If the binding energy B of a nucleus mass number h or z is given by B equals to this, and the values are given this, 
then for the most stable isobar for a nucleus with a equals to 216 is so this is the expression of binding energy for most stable isobar del b del z equals to 0 and del square b by del z square less than 0 from del b del z equals to 0 in just taking the derivative of this expression so minus asymmetric 2z minus a by a into 4 minus 2 ac by z 2 ac z into divided by a into a to the 1 by 3 equals to 0 now <coughs> This is uh, 4 into 2z by a means 8z by a into asymmetric minus minus plus 4a asymmetric minus 2ac into z by a to the 1 by 1 third. Now we are uh, gathering the term of z and keeping the extra term on the right hand side and uh, by doing some simple calculation putting the values given to the question we are getting it to be 4.29 means uh, approximately. 84. So, 84 is the stable isobar and it is matching with option C. Okay, and uh, this is the end. So, I have tried my best to provide the solutions in great detail. Irrespective of this, if you have any doubts, confusions, or queries, you can comment down below. I will try my best to clarify them all. Any kind of suggestions are always welcome. And all the best to all the CSR net aspirants. Remember one thing that a cool mind is the ultimate weapon in this exam. Don't get nervous. Face this exam boldly and carefully. Everything will be alright. So this is all for today guys. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are a new visitor of this channel, please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon. So that you never miss any update. Keep sharing, keep loving and keep exploring the wonders of physics. And finally, thanks for watching. Thank you.